What the heck? What are you doing? I always terrorize him. All right, so in the past couple of videos, you guys have complained that I don't record any type of actual what the fuck is going on. So this is going to be a how-to video install a hydro e-brake when you already have dual calipers on your car. And I'm not even going to show my face this whole entire video. The whole video? The whole video. Damn. I'm going to have a disguised voice right now too. So they don't even know who's talking. So I probably won't do that because that would be really annoying. But. Wish I didn't have to see your face every day. <laughs> but. We're basically, we're going to be getting the hydro e-brake in today. I explained to you guys in the last video that everything was just going wrong. And uh, yeah, it sucked. So we're going to run these lines today. We're going to. We're gonna show you those lines real quick and make sure you know what they are. All right, so this is gonna be the ultimate hydro e-brake install thread. So, step number one, you need a hydro e-brake of some sort. This one is a cool one. Secondly, you need lines with all types of fittings and tees and banjo bolts and copper fittings. Or, option number two, this is a dual caliper setup, so there's only one fitting out of this. Option number two, you can do inline setup, which I will explain real quick. Basically, you see two, one line going in, one line going out. So he has a rear brake line from his master to the rear of his wheels. So you just tap into that with two new lines and you put your hydro e-brake in between that. So that is one way of doing it. But today, I'm going to explain the dual caliper setup as you see right there. All right, so we're gonna get started, and the first thing you have to do that I would suggest doing, because I didn't record it unless you watched the other video, is you have to get your dual caliper on there. I chose to go the GK Tech way. So step number two, which is probably the first step and the most exciting step, is you need to figure out where you want to mount your hydro e-brake, so let's hop inside the car. All right, so step number one, which is the most fun step, is figuring out where you want your hydro e-brake. Personally, I like my hydro to be on the left side. Um, I just feel it's more in the driver's position. I feel it's easier to grab. You can see it. You're not kind of winging it over here like, fuck, fuck, shit, shit, arr! Like, you know, you can't be doing that when you're running mad tandem. So, we're gonna be mounting my hydro e-brake on the left side of a left-hand drive vehicle. So if it was a right-hand drive vehicle, it would be on the right side for my left hand to grab. Um, one of the first things you really wanna make sure though, uh, make sure your seating position is good. Make sure you, you know your clutch you're pushing in, you have a little bit of bend in your knee and all that, so when you mount your hydro, that's the actual position you're gonna be driving in. This is where I would be driving, right here with my steering wheel this height, and then hydro e-brake if I went to grab it. Nice good elbow bend right there, good weenus bend. You still bang hella gears. So yeah, that is where we're gonna be mounting my hydro e-brake. Um, I guess, step number one, we're gonna drill the holes and actually mount this thing. All right, so hopefully it's in focus. After you drill both your holes into your mounting bracket that you bought or made over here or whatever, um, stick both the bolts through the hydro or however you plan to mount it. All right, so our hydro e-brake is now mounted. Check one more time to make sure, well you should make sure your seat actually uh, can go up too, which I'm good, but damn, there we go, make sure you can grab it nice and good, you'll be drifting, you'll be hitting gears, so you really need to be able to pull that e-brake. Alright, so after you have your e-brake mounted, the next step is going to be to run your first line if you're doing a dual caliper setup, which is going to be your main line out of it to a T-fitting to your rear caliper. So, well mine, I have a banjo bolt, stick your thing through there with a copper washer on either side and then you're going to figure out which side you actually want it on. I want it on this side so it's out of my way. You don't need to go ahead and tighten anything down yet. So now we're going to take, oh, hey Hydro, <laughs> Hydro we're installing a Hydro today. All right, so this is the part that I can't really show you guys that much because I'm kind of under the car, but I'm just going to pretty much explain it really quick. So this is the line coming from the hydro. Basically, you just pull it out a little bit so you have some. This is the T-fitting that you're going to be mounting. 
So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down in the here and then tighten the other two on the other sides and the right will go to the right and the left will go to the left. It's that simple. So you can use a union or any type of T you want. This is probably the best though. All right, so after you do your T fitting, you're gonna wanna come over here and find your lines, which mine are right here. And then you're gonna kinda wanna figure out, you're gonna wanna figure out where you wanna run them. I ran mine down here. It's kinda tough for you guys to see. And then right back here, it goes into the caliper. I know it's hard for you to see, but just make sure it's out of the way. Make sure it's not near your axle or anything. And then the same thing for the other side. And bam, that's pretty much a full dual caliper setup. So I got everything hooked up. I don't really have anyone help to help me bleed it, but I might try to add some fluid and make sure that nothing's leaking. Okay. All right, so next step, like I said, we gotta bleed it. So you're gonna need a partner to bleed it. Lena's gonna do the bleeding. And then I'm gonna, well, Lena's gonna do the pumping and then I'm gonna do the bleeding. So pretty simple, just like brakes, you just pump it up like a pedal, just and then squirt and then squirt squirt and then squirt squirt and then skirt skirt so skirt, skirt. we're gonna get started all right so i know you guys can't really see anything but we have i don't know where i left off but we have two more things to do um i gotta go get exhaust bolts which i have in my pocket and bash bar bolts and a noodle to hold up my bumper which i might have one so i'm not gonna get it but as soon as we do that hopefully we're gonna go drive my car Nothing crazy, it's insured. I insured it today, I need to get tags tomorrow. But we'll just go around the block and make sure the e-brake works, make sure the brakes work, make sure, you know, throttle's okay, and all stuff like that. It is the next day, I got tags for the Kuki, Koki, whatever the hell it is, my fucking drift car. So, the last thing to do is to slap these legalized driving drift car thingies on my car. Um, I have to do a tag light, which is really easy. Um, I'm gonna use an LED strip, it's just, it's easier than putting a fucking light bulb up in there like a house. Like, ding, ding. So we're gonna put an LED strip right here. I'm gonna wire it directly into my tail lights so when I flick my headlights on, they come on. And uh, this thing is road worthy. It's, uh, it's gonna be rad. We're not gonna drive it today just because I can't even get out of my backyard. It's too muddy, I don't even wanna try. So tomorrow, I promise, we're going street drifting. It's time to really test this thing. We got a couple spots we're gonna hit up. I'm not gonna go Chelsea Denofa out there and damage my car or nothing. I really wanna feel it out before you know I start trying to go hard with angle mods and more power, because you don't wanna learn that way. So stay tuned for tomorrow's video, and we'll be back, and hopefully, actually drifting this thing. I would record putting in a tag light, but I doubt you guys want to see that, so 